Hello everyone, I am Realm Builder Guy, and welcome back to the channel and a new Crusader Kings 3 guide. So most of us have been told at some point in our lives to never talk about politics or religion. Well today I'm going to talk about one of those things, namely religion, at least as it relates to Crusader Kings 3. All the other religion discussions I will leave to people elsewhere. But before I dive into this somewhat complex topic, Please don't forget to leave a like on the video since it really helps the channel grow. You can also check out the links in the description to such things as the rapidly growing Discord, which uh, with the help of Chewy Shoot, I invested a lot of time and effort into and trying to make it uh, a lot of fun. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter down there. You can check out the link to the Twitch channel, Patreon if you want to support the channel that way, as well as my Nexus GG store where you can buy games and help support the channel there. So. Religion. Okay. In Crusader Kings 3, when we talk about religion, we look at the broad religious family, the general religion, the faith itself, and the doctrines and tenets that make up said faith. There are actually three religious families to which all religions belong. Okay? These families are Abrahamic, to which belong Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Dualism, and Milete, Tawuze Melek. You can look that one up on your own. Then there is the Eastern religious family, which includes Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, Zoroastrianism, and Taoism. And then the pagan religious family, which is everybody else. And I'm not going to list all of those because, well, there are a lot of them. Now, these families are important because these families determine the faith hostility felt towards other faiths. The hostility is either hostile, evil, or astray, or righteous. Righteous, of course, being, hey, we're of the same religion, so it's all cool. Each level of hostility has different opinion modifiers and also dictates things such as intermarriage, title usurpation, and holy wars. Now remember, you can only declare a holy war versus hostile or evil faiths. So, you know, if there's another Christian faith that's not seen as hostile, to Catholicism, you can't declare a holy war, but you could declare a holy war here as a Catholic leader against, say, Slovianskan, uh, just because religion-wise, uh, it, it allows for such. In most pagan religions, you can do it anyway. So next, we talk about faiths. Faiths are the next subcategory below religion. So we had, you know, the religious families, and then we had religion. So an example of how you break this down would be the religious family is Abrahamic, the religion is Christianity, and the faith in this case is Catholicism. And as you can see here, it lists organized Christian, the religion, and there you can see the religious family, Abrahamic, and then it says faith. Faiths are either organized, as Catholicism is, or unreformed with different bonuses and effects. Example, an organized faith can adopt feudal clan ways by a decision, whereas an unreformed faith cannot. Unreformed faiths can be reformed by a ruler who controls at least three holy sites, plus spending a large amount of piety. Once reformed, the faith will keep the old unreformed faith's name. So if you have an unreformed faith and you say, I need to organize it so that you know, we can take the decision to become feudal, well, or adopt feudal ways, this is the way you have to do it. Faiths also have virtues and sins attributed to them. You can see it right here, we're in Catholicism, we have our sins, and we have our virtues. Characters that have a trait that is either a virtue or a sin will get positive and or negative modifiers from them. If we look at Catholicism, which is obviously a very dominant religion or a faith at this time, the sins would be lustful, gluttonous, deceitful, sadistic, and vengeful. I've had characters that have ticked most of those boxes. The virtues would be chaste, which is really something you don't really want because of the fertility negative modifier. Temperate, honest, compassionate, and forgiving. Fervor is a key part of each faith. It determines how expensive it is to create a new faith and how likely it is that conversions happen. You can see here is fervor right now, 50% plus 0 0.03. Fervor naturally increases by this 0 0.03 per month, or this is 0 0.03, but your base is 0 0.3, sorry. You can see 
right here. Size of faith is a negative modifier, and I'll talk about that. Now, the fervor growth is modified by the virtues and sins of religious leaders, especially the head of faith. So in this case, it would be Pope Alexander III. Fervor growth is slowed for faiths that are followed in more than 20 counties. Now, of course, this is Catholicism. It's in way more than 20 counties. So that's why you have the signs of faith negative modifier of minus 87%. So instead of 0.3, you get a 0 0.03. New faiths start at 100% fervor, whereas historical faiths, like here you can see Catholicism, it starts at 50%. Once fervor drops below 40%, heresies can be triggered, and you as a ruler, as a character, can actually convert to a heretical faith. Another aspect of each faith is conversion. Each character convert can convert to a different faith at any time. Here's how you do it. So let me click out of this. You can click right here, back into it, and then you simply click the button right here for other faiths, and then you can pick something. Anything anything at all. Just click a faith and select the desired faith. Conversion will cost you piety, which is based on the difference between doctrines and a number of modifiers. So I could pick pretty much any of these. Um, you can also see here, uh, right here is how they are seen, either astray or righteous, how we consider this religion, how they consider us as righteous. So if we go to Coptic, we could convert to this faith. Um, but we are, of course, the total cost is 1400 one and 17 in piety, and we're shy quite a bit. But we could have converted, so you can actually quite easily convert faiths. Now, I'm not going to go through every faith because we'd be here four hours, because in Crusader Kings 3, there are a ton of faiths to choose from. But note that each faith has a number of key defining characteristics, which are... Let me show it right here. We have tenets. Then we have views on gender, religious attitude, clerical tradition, head of faith, ecumenism, marriage doctrines, crime doctrines, clergy doctrines, and holy sites. You can see here are the holy sites of Catholicism listed right here. Now you can also create a new faith once per lifetime of each ruler. Right here, you click on your religion and you just go to create new faith. You must be at peace and have the requisite amount of piety needed to create a new faith. The farther the new faith's tenets are from the original faith, the more piety it will cost. Once the faith is created, the ruler, their family, and the realm capital will instantly convert. Vassals convert based on opinion and learning. The new faith inherits the holy sites of the original faith. Note that vassals can only create a new faith if they are a duke level or higher, and the new faith cannot have identical tenets and doctrines of the original faith. It does need to diverge. So here you've got your new Christian faith. You can change your faith icon to anything here. Whoop. Uh, you can choose a name. You can put in your name, adjective, single follower, many followers, a description of the faith. You can change your tenets here as you can see it'll show you the piety cost for changing these and it costs more the further you go away from your original faith your doctrines you can change here it'll show you again your piety costs marriage doctrines your crime doctrines as well as your clergy doctrines down here and then once you've got all of that clicked well, then you can simply create your faith, uh, but it will cost you a lot of piety. Now, I mentioned that tenets are a key aspect of every faith, but what exactly are they? You can see them listed right here. Three tenets of Catholicism are armed pilgrimages, communion, and monasticism. They represent the important rites, rituals, and traditions of each faith with every faith having three of them. No more, no less, technically. I mean, there. I guess there are some that can have less, but you, you tend to have three. There are common tenets that are available to all religions. Example, adaptive, communion, legalism, etc. And there are restricted tenets that are only available to some religions. Example, ancestor worship, patron gods, human sacrifice, etc. So if we try to create a new faith, 
we go to tenants, you can see all the different tenants listed right here. On top of that, you have syncretism tenants. These borrow at least one virtue and sin from another religion, grant plus 30 opinion mutually with all characters following it, and make the faiths to be considered or consider the current faith evil. Each faith can only have one syncretic tenet. Eastern syncretism doesn't provide said plus 30 opinion bonus, so there's, if you want to min max, it's not really worth it. The final key aspect of religion I want to mention are faith's doctrines. These are basically the rules of a given faith. Doctrines are broken down into a few categories. Main doctrines, you can see here, we've got male-dominated, righteous, theocratic, and ecumenism. They determine the main rules of the faith and have an impact on how a realm is governed where the ruler has said faith. Then you have your marriage doctrines. So here, marriage type is monogamous, divorce must be approved, bastardry is legitimization, and consanguinity is avunculate marriage. Determines who can marry, when they can marry, when if they can divorce, and the status of children born outside of marriage. Bastardry, right here. Then we've got our crime doctrines. These determine whether certain acts are accepted, shunned, or deemed as crimes. You can see here in Catholicism, we have same-sex relations are shunned, deviancy is criminal, male adultery is shunned, female adultery is criminal, kin slaying is close kin is at least criminal, and witchcraft is criminal. Then we also have clergy doctrines. These have effects only on court chaplains, realm priests, temple holders, and characters with the monk trait. So here we can see clerical function is control, clerical gender is only men, clerical marriage isn't allowed, and clerical appointment spiritual for life. And finally down here we have special doctrines. They are encountered by some faiths, example, naked priests for the Digambara faith, or here teaching of Jesus, special doctrine for Catholicism. So what this one does is no Christian face with the Christian syncretism tenet are considered hostile instead of evil. Mutual plus 30 opinion bonus with face that have Christian syncretism tenet. So that's important to note. So there you have it, a quick general overview of religion in Crusader Kings 3. Now, I originally said that it's a complex topic. It is complex depending on how deep you want to dive. If you want to create your own faith, well, then you can do that. Go in there and go crazy. But remember, you need the piety to either convert or create a faith. Conversion could be fun. I've done that before, and it's gotten some interesting storylines in there. And I've also created faiths just for fun, just to see what happens. But you got to get relatively far in the game, because, again, you need to build up that piety. So the first job is it's a little bit of a min-max game. you got to build up the piety and then do either the conversion or the faith creation. Everything else is pretty straightforward, but it's a topic that I wanted to address and let people know what is available and what to think of when you're looking at faith, especially when you look at the modifiers based on character traits. Now, I didn't want to give a meta guide to religion to show you how to optimize a faith for the best bonuses, since that's not how I play the game, and I believe that's something each player should discover for themselves. There's a lot you can play with here and a lot you can create and really have a lot of fun with. So if you enjoyed this religion guide, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing that, and maybe even the little notification bell to not miss any future Crusader Kings 3 content here on the channel. And until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.